Hello and welcome to program 83 and welcome to markplex.com where I look at TradeStation Easy Language and the site has a variety of tutorials and programs and also Gold Pass membership. So please visit the site, uh, subscribe to the email list and subscribe to this YouTube channel if this material might interest you. So program 83 looks for divergence between price and 16 different oscillators. And what it does, if it finds divergence for a specific bar, then it tops that value up and lists the number of bear divergences and bullish divergences. And so you can see in this column here on radar screen, we have eight bearish divergences, potentially bearish divergences for ALGN. And uh, you can see here that uh, for BMRN, we have four bullish or potentially bullish divergences. And the reason that these are a, a darker red and a darker green is because the numbers are above user input amount. And the, uh, the oscillators we're looking at are actually the same as program 62. Program 83 is based on program 62. Uh, but rather than just concentrating on a specific oscillator and uh, plotting values on a chart and in radar screen, etc., uh, as program 62 did, what program 83 does is it looks at all of the oscillators and tots up the number of potential divergences by symbol. So you can see here the various oscillators that we're looking at. And this is the uh, program 62 page, but I'm also going to include this table on the program 83 page. Program 83 runs on radar screen and on scanner, not on uh, charts. If we just look at the scanner, I've already created a scan here and we'll just use this as a way of just uh, quickly running through the inputs for the program. I'm going to click on that little plus sign there and we can look at the inputs. So uh, max array size. What um, program 83 does and actually program 62 when it's looking for divergences it doesn't just compare the uh, the most recent price oscillator pivot with the previous price oscillator pivots it actually goes back a certain number of pivot pairs and that the number it goes back is determined by this value obviously the uh, the higher the value the more processing it's doing bear threshold and bull threshold these are the values above which that we get the uh, the cells in radar screen made a darker color, made the dark red, the green. Left strength, right strength, these determine how many bars to the right and left of the pivots we need. Bar tolerance, this determines because the uh, the price pivot and the oscillator pivot might not necessarily be on exactly the same bar, how many bars they can be apart. So we can define that. Then uh, OSC price high, OSC price low and OSC price C, these are the price values we're using. So I've just got these set default as high, low and close. Then we've got the inputs for the various oscillators. And then finally with the scanner, I've set here a uh, interval of five minutes, max bars back, uh, auto detect, load additional bars, 200 and so on. And if we just go back to the format before we run the scan, you'll see that the uh, the, what we're looking for is one of the plots, bull or bear, which are equivalent to the ones that we just saw in radar screen. What I'm saying is that has to be above a certain value. So greater or equal to two. And, uh, having done that, and obviously you can vary whether you want it greater, greater or equal to, etc. Once we've done that, we can run the scan and uh, that will come back and show us the symbols that this criteria is valid for. Okay, so there's the result of that scan. Now let's just go back to radar screen because I need to mention something else and that is in the setup. So if we uh, go format analysis technique, program 83 for all symbols, we need to make sure that in the general inputs that we are not updating value intrabar tick by tick. So that is not selected. As with the scanner, the max number of bars study will reference is set to auto detect. We're loading an additional uh, 200 bars. Now a program like program 83 required uh, me to do a lot of testing. And so what I've decided to do is within the program, I included some test plots which are ordinarily, and probably you'll want to keep them commented out for most of the time. But uh, if you wish, you can uncomment them. They're about line 346 or 
little bit a uh, little bit before that but the bullish 346 if we uncomment those and what I've just done is removed the curly parenthesis from either end of the bank of plots we, I'm then going to verify uh, the program again and then what we what we will see is actually what we now have is each plot relating to each one of the oscillators shows us the individual values so you can see here if we were to go along and for, for example here it's saying we've got four bullish so you can see one two three uh one two three four so that seems to uh, to add up but what i did is i created a a new version effectively of program 62 which i call program 83 tester and i'm including this program uh, with the download what what this program does is essentially i've just applied it to radar screen 16 times and then in each case i've set the input value which is the number of the oscillator that we're focusing on to a specific value and uh, i did that so that i could then compare the values uh, of this with the values here to make sure that the uh, the two programs were working in sync. So this is called uh, Program 83 Tester. And uh, as I say, I'm going to include that in the program. This is based on Program 62, but with uh, some significant dis uh, differences. Um, specifically, I've removed a lot of the plots. The only, the only thing it plots is the oscillator that we're looking at at the moment. And uh, the original program uh, used the, uh, uh, the plot when it was um, bullish this bar or last bar. I've just changed that to this bar for the sake of testing uh, this program. The other good thing about uh, program 83 tester is not only does this uh, work on radar screen and uh, potentially on scanner, but also you can use it on uh, a chart so you can see the actual divergences drawn um, between the various points that would help you help explain i think why uh, the program is saying that there are certain divergences and you can see here we have the oscillator potential divergences for a, a particular particular stock uh, again uh, when this program uh, the uh, program 83 dash tester is applied to the chart it's uh, important also to make sure that the update bar intra bar is not selected so this this is effectively just calculating at the end of each bar in that way that the uh, we're comparing like and like between the two programs so uh, you may not need the additional tester program but uh, it, it could be useful for you from a programming pers perspective and of course you can comment out these individual oscillators if you don't need that information just to uh, have a cleaner look at the sum of the number of divergences so uh, i hope you find this useful i will make it uh, available i'm just uh, actually just before we go just let me show you the uh, input to the tester so i'm just saying the update value intra bar that uh, is not selected there and then in the inputs we've just got the uh, which OSC uh, is different for all 16 so that we can compare the two values. We've also got some additional inputs here risk, uh, with respect to the, uh, the trend lines and the uh, little ellipses that are drawn at the end of the trend lines. Anyway, I hope this uh, might be useful for you. I am going to make it available uh, for download at markplex.com. Again, if you're not part of the Markplex email list, then please go to markplex, M-A-R-K-P-L-E-X.com to join that and also subscribe. And if this is useful to you, please also uh, give this a little like on YouTube. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.